Well, good afternoon or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to go over how to figure out the types of chemical bonds. Pretty straightforward. And also next to that, number of atoms in a formula as we get into there. So to begin with, I'm just going to draw a simple little periodic table there. Put the zigzag that separates the metals with an M from the non-metals. And when a metal bonds to a non-metal, we call that ionic. When a non-metal bonds to a non-metal, we call that covalent. There's also when metals bond to metal, metallic, but I don't think we have any on this chart. So for this one, you just need to take a look. The directions say to label them either as ionic or covalent. And then here they're saying both, which means it's got a polyatomic ion in it, and the polyatomic ions are always covalently bound. So you've got calcium, which is a metal, and chloride over here, so that's definitely gonna be ionic. I'm just gonna put a capital I on there to abbreviate it for that. Okay, here we have nothing but nonmetals bonded together. So that definition is gonna be nonmetal to nonmetal, so that'll be covalent. I'll just put that C there. And then you just kind of continue on. Now down here, I mean, yeah, SO4, the sulfate, that is a covalent compound in there. But then when it, it has a minus, I think that has a minus two charge. Barium, yeah, barium has a plus two charge. So this is actually an ionic compound. But if you wanted to put both, because there is the ionic part, but there is a compound there, that's fine. But I really can consider that, that's ionic. If you got a metal with some non-metals, like that. Now, coming across over here, number of atoms in a formula. What you gotta do is add up the subscripts. That's a subscript right there. It's telling you there's four oxygens. Right there, it's telling you that there's two hydrogens. It's always after the letter in front of it. Now, sulfur here, there's only one of them. So there's no subscript listed there. And what that means is that there's an invisible one right there. So if it helps you to put a one, go for it. So when we go to work on this, we've got two hydrogens plus one sulfur. Now we're up to three. And then we got to add four oxygen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven atoms all together in that one. Now you got to be careful when you get a polyatomic ion, like on number four here. So barium hydroxide, but there's two of the hydroxides. If you could actually see this, it would look like this. Chemists are lazy and they don't want to draw that out. So we know in an OH, there's just two, one hydrogen, one oxygen, but there's two of those. So there's two inside of here, and I'm gonna multiply that by two, so that's gonna be four, plus this is five, or if you need to draw it out, there's one, two, three, four, five inside of there. Then you get some crazy ones like this. Tricalcium diphosphate, if we wanna use the real fancy naming for it. Whoops, sorry, I got in the way. Well, three calciums, that's pretty straightforward. Now we've got PO4, which is phosphate, but we've got two of them. So that means four times two is gonna be eight oxygens. I'll put O up there for oxygen. Phosphoruses, there is two of those. And then calciums, the subscript says there's three, so we got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. If that's kind of hard to conceptualize, then do PO4, and then do another PO4, and it's attached to three calciums here. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 is what we got there. So that's how we work on those. Go to it.